but I'm just going to follow your lead so that one of us. Hi, sorry. <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning into another edition of the Gold Pill Podcast. I am Meredith and I am here with my amazing, creative, uh, talented manifesting generator, Pisces, uh, <laughs> co-host Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Meredith. Thank you for being here on this lovely day. Um, I'm feeling very empowered. We had a little pre-chat and I am oh, feeling so good. Like, like a little fire in my belly and like, but in the, the best way possible. So let's just like get into it. But you look, you, I haven't seen you, but through your blurry camera, but I know that you're looking <laughs> stunning and fabulous and all of the things. So, oh my gosh. I cannot even like, I want to talk for a second about like my, I know this is kind of like a side street right away, but like my computer, yeah. I spilled water on it on accident. And I was really like having a lot of things just like in the third dimension, like that I needed to address all at once that required my attention all at once. And I took my computer apart and I laid it in front of my little heater that I have and like in different, you know, and it works, it works. So I'm just so grateful that I still have all my files. I still have like the ability to do Zoom. Like there's certain features that kind of like come in and out and that's not my favorite thing, but um, I just wanted to share that I kind of out mercuried Mercury uh, last week. And so I'm just happy to be able to even record today, Amy. Like I just go. had this like total insight because as you know, well, I don't know if our listeners know, but 2020 or <laughs> 2023 is um, is openly and, and very loudly year of the bag here at the Gold Pill. And that's <laughs> because we're like money hungry. It's because we're just like, hey, everyone in the Gold Pill everyone that's like been putting in the work, like energy is a real thing. Right. And so we're just really excited about that. The thing is though, is that money is like the stupidest motivator ultimately for magic. <laughs> and so I was like, what a great motivator for Meredith to like ultimately have this bag contain because a bag just like contains something right. That we want. It contains in part, like your computer that will help facilitate a really really wonderful recording situation and provide yeah. you with lots of like stability and income and sustenance and you know uh sustainability essentially it's not just about mm -hmm. like money it's about living and so I'm just like wow yeah. what a cool way to like really usher in the year of the bag but like have <laughs> this actual symbol of something that really does sort of symbolize like a life force which is I would not have wanted to say this a year ago, but the computers are what's connecting all of us. You know, you're listening to this on a For device. So, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Until we have to go direct and then we will, I feel, I mean, that's just my opinion, but, um, but yeah, so, okay. Let's talk about, because we were getting into some really good juicy stuff earlier. And I was like, hang on a second, let's <laughs> press the record button and, you know, mm. and talk about the black pill and the gold pill and what, like, for each of us, maybe individually or together, like, what ushered us from here to there and, like, what was our own, you know, unique experience of that? Because, I don't know, I just feel like there's a little bit of an atmosphere being created that is very deeply scarce and depressing and, um, mm we all get it. Like, I don't know. It's like, and so I just wanted to chat about that with you. And, um, yeah, I think like getting to the black pill just to start it off is like a really important spot. And I just think the, the, the mistake there is that it's like the destination. So like that we yeah. go through this because it's such an amazing part of the awakening process. When you realize that you've been betrayed, like betrayal trauma is very real. Yeah. And realize, and it's so important too, because really you kind of, you are left feeling very kind of like naked and afraid. Right. But ultimately <laughs> that's just the beginning of your journey. And, mm -hmm. and knowing that you have like eat that dark black apple of accepting that the world is this like dark place that maybe you didn't think it was, is really important. But then what do you do with that? You can't just like sit there eating rotten apples. That's like a terrible idea. Right. So yeah. like we, it's not like you get to just like do this over time but honestly it's like 
well, the world is not really designed to make me feel good. And in fact, I'm receiving messaging from the matrix or from propaganda or whatever to feel really bad about myself all the time. Yeah. And now that I have that awareness, like how do I like fix that? And so that's where the gold pill, the alchemy kind of comes in of the blackening mm-hmm. being really important and burning off all the unnecessary stuff. Yeah. And sort of attuning and finding the things that are really I look at gold as like being this deep, dark thing that you have to really like mine for, and you have to get through lots of layers of the earth, right? The earth's core and yeah. even to go under like waterfalls and all sorts of ways that you can um, harvest gold. But if you look at that metaphorically, that's kind of what you have to do. You have to go into the darkest places with like your little miner hat and you have to like dig and you have to like really yeah. really like take your yeah. pick at some hard rock for a really long time and kind of hit your wall against or hit your head against the wall and eventually you find something and that is so precious to you because of all the time you've spent in the dark and it's this very very glistening sparkly thing in all of the darkness and that is you and you find that on your own you know what I mean that that's an individual process of what is gold for you and gold right. No, go ahead. I've I've taken it over. Totally. No, no, I'm into it. I actually like what you're saying very much reminds me. And I'm so glad that we can come together and talk about like what the, like, it just feels like the perfect day after the chat we were having to like come together and talk about like the true, like distilled essence of like the gold pill and like what we went through to get to that space and why like it's its own initiation really. And, you know, so I don't know. I I was thinking a lot about like the mythological like descent of the goddess when you were talking about this. Mm. That's like a you know matter is yeah. mother, right? So it's mm-hmm. like there's something very like deeply um feminine in quality about descending into matter or like you could say like falling into matter and like honestly like there's a lot of um you know spiritual teachings in my opinion that like reinforce this idea that matter matrix mother whatever like all of this down here is an illusion or is like somehow I understand that it is kind of an illusion or like there it is that on some level but also there's like a Uh there's a necessity to be here to find the jewels that we are like supposed to find. That's how I see it. Cause I just like, don't live in a world where like my soul would put me in a situation where like, I'm not prepared for it or like, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. what you just said. Um, did you, I'm sorry, go ahead and finish. Cause I, oh, no, I, I think really... that that's God. just it. It's like, there's something very like, And I like that you called it like the, like the darkening or like something like this because the blackening, yeah, blackening. Yeah. Because it is like a, um, yeah, it's just a whole process. And I was wondering, you know, just for people to have like a vague or like a specific idea of what the black pill is like even, because I think that it could use like, you know, just like, I don't know. I'm just curious what you would actually like, spe- like define it as. Ooh, the black pill would be the kind of Im- like in uh, ingesting the kind of information mm-hmm. or material like that. Mm-hmm. Really, it's hard truth. It's hard. It's reality, and it's ex- and it really is in contrast, probably to a lot of things that the normal person has been led to believe their whole life, and they receive it all at once. And that is like, it's a betrayal of sorts, I think, Mm -hmm. to the heart and mind. And I think that Mm -hmm. um, one of two things happens there. I think a person can stay in fetal position and just like hate the world. And that is totally a prerogative. Or what happens is like kind of what we've been talking about, which is you go, okay, what now? Like, do I I have to keep moving? Like in this desolate, like wasteland, Mm -hmm. like we have to keep it because I'm alive. And like you said, the spirit, I love when you said that spirit falls into matter and that there is an illusion with matter. There's our feelings and hormones. And oh, like yeah. 
then it's like it, then it's acknowledging that it's a step deeper into the the, the reality that is be, kind of below that which i like to refer to as the linoleum like the floor mm. which is the, the um where you try to see everything in that floor for, without even the illusion of hormones and emotions which is almost impossible impossible to do mm. But it is doable at times. Like you have moments where I would consider that like deeply lucid, right? Because yeah, you're doing things like exact. There's no, there's no like veil of like pink glasses or <laughs> anything like that. But see, when you when you see that and you see like the actual like war that has never stopped, and you see that like yeah. there's genocide, you right? Like we could stay there, like I said, and get really caught up in that. Or it's like, what do you do? And it's like, well, you tell people yeah. about it. And you tell them in a way that's like, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to face this darkness and I promise you I will not let go. Like, right. And like, I will, we are all just going to like, because we're all here and we're just going to try to like figure this out together and we're going to make our way. And I think the word we were saying yeah. earlier is like fortify our position and for it, which will strengthen the community, you know, and yeah then you become more self-reliant and it's not this like rejection of the world self-reliance it's kind of working with it maybe in some ways and right you know a lot of that it's right. a lot of that 12 step chatter of like give me the serenity to like know the things i can change and to accept the things i can't i mean it's so much of that you know so yeah and i think too like there's a there's an element of like the black pill that i feel all right so you know, there's hard truth. I feel like my spirit really black pilled me. Like I didn't mm. even, oh, I'm so annoyed by that to this day because I feel like I tend to err on the positive as a person, even though it seems like I don't, but it's just because my spirit black pilled me so hard. <laughs> You're fine that, your like, yeah. that I was kind of like forced into like seeing things I felt like at the time, like from a new mm. place, which did come with like a removal of like the pink glasses. Right. And it's like the, the sunglass moment and they live where you're like mm. just seeing more things. <laughs> exactly. The special glasses. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, um, yeah, I feel that there is a lot of that type of material to ingest and it leaves you with this like powerless and hopeless mm -hmm. taste in your mouth and so theoretically speaking if this were like an inverted type of world right and you listen to like some AI experts and a little bit of Joe Rogan with like Robert Malone, Malone or whatever. Yes. And you listen to like a little bit of, you know, like black pilled information. You come away with this like idea that you are, yeah, nothing. And that like th this is over and, you know, there's like all of these different ideas. But in reality, because this is an inverse or like the world is like upside down inside out so it's not actually hopeless at all because that's like the opposite of what the dominant messaging is which is always you should always take the opposite of that <laughs> if yeah. that makes sense like I yeah. think that um that there's a lot of like empowerment and being able to identify and understand like symbols Mm -hmm. um you know and and to like be able to have sort of like a relationship with symbols I think that's very symbolism for me has always been central to the gold pill because they're a big part of alchemy which is that kind of like taking the black pill which is like hopelessness powerlessness like feeling defeated and feeling also like high on like information and very righteous usually Me there's too. like righteous energy that can come with the black pill too and oh, like yeah. right and kind of <laughs> and kind of being in that space and then like moving it and funneling it into something that is ultimately like creating like a very fertile environment around yourself like as in your energy field and your house and like your like the places that you visit where you are like turned on from the inside and you're able to kind of like 
spread. It's like, it's not love and light because that is, feels very artificial always to me, but it's just like a way of for a meaningful life. It's using awareness of like energy and like, you know, and universal laws and things like this and esoterics to kind of like make your own personal world like the best place that it could be, which ultimately then supports like the community. Like you're saying, you know, I have been writing for this amazing astrology website recently, and I have been like working my freaking butt off. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to get body work done with Asher. I'm going to get some supplies for like my craft from Sierra. And I'm like thinking like, okay, I can like, from, from what I have, I can give, you know, but it's like, I think there's something very regenerative about the energy of gold. Gold doesn't necessarily neglect itself because, you know, well, I think of gold too is like the Goldilocks and the three bears, right? And it's like for Goldilocks, she had to find a thing that was just right for her. And although she had to like mm. kind of go and invade the bear's home, right? And figure in, she had to ultimately be confronted by the bears at the end too. Yeah. Um, but it was all about finding what was right for her. And I think that it's like, if you kind of harmonize that, um, that, what is that, that Grimm's tale or whatever, I don't even know what that is with, um, <laughs> the idea that we have our seat. It's not our secret. It's our body language, right? Like, that's what I call it. And it's like, mm -hmm. there are things to, it's, um, I, it was, it was mentioned in Mel Gibson's movie signs from the nineties, but basically it's like your brain has everything it needs or your consciousness let's say has everything it needs to talk to you mm -hmm. and so when something comes up it's going to remind you of something else and it's up to you to connect those two things and it's up to you to be aware that that thing is being you know brought forth to you by your consciousness but it's all about you know you're you are constantly getting signals and signs from your your actual like living organism organic body yeah. and that is, and it, it speaks to you kind of subconsciously in, in symbols. And sometimes those symbols are reflective of the entire collective. And sometimes those symbols are reflective of something that's like just for you to find meaning totally. of. And that's for you to figure out, but you have to kind of come to uh, arrive at a place with yourself that you trust yourself. And I think for so many of us, the reason that we even go down the, the, the rabbit hole with the black pill is because we have come to a place where like we're not trusting where our footing anymore yeah and I think it's a, a the, the black is also like a very protective color mm -hmm. like I know a lot of like spiritual people wear it because they want to like preserve their energy totally. and it's like if you think of it that way too it's like the black pill is a way to be like hey here's all these ways that you were being like harvested and now you can like be aware of that and it's kind of a protective thing but when protection becomes like paranoia and trust me I've been there me uh, that's that's the ish, you know? And so I think that maybe what we can do as a gold pill sort of, you know, vibe is help people kind of, you know, paranoia is cool and it has its spot and it's definitely, yeah. helps, you know, bring home some points, but maybe kind of like surf the waves of paranoia into the lands of just being aware and, and maybe just kind of being able to, you know, our lives don't have to revolve around this information. Yeah, like I think that um that situational awareness is such a beautiful gift and it's something that you can take with you wherever you go, but I think that there comes a place or a point where like I think that one of the things that I'm really glad that's coming up a lot is nervous system regulation. Like it's coming up a lot in my life and my algorithm. I just think that it's something that more people are talking about because Yeah. You know, like we live in a world that is actually like hostile to, oh my God, I just had an orb <laughs> fly through my house. Okay. So um, we live in a world that is hostile to our nervous system, like at the very baseline, I think like fast moving cars and like LED lights and like just technology in general. And there's a lot of other things that just kind of like irk our nerves for lack of a better word and I think that like a lot of people are like wanting to come back to just tools to kind of like yeah help themselves to regulate so that they're not making like any like decisions in that space of just like 
sympathetic nervous system overload of like adrenaline overload. Cause a lot of this information can be like physically, I don't know. It's just, it's especially depending on who's presenting it, what their intentions and their motives are. Like, I swear some of these people are like paid to like, just generate as much like Mm -hmm. hope or fucking whatever it is, fear like as possible. And then you know, I don't know. I just, so yeah. And that's what, yeah. It just really becomes like our job to remember, I mean, our job individually to remember mm-hmm. that like, there is a balance to everything and to take what works from either side of that balance. And like, there is a hopium and then there's like a true hope, which is, has nothing to do with the actual outcome, you know? And then there's, yeah. it's just, and then there's actually like lots of ways that people are post uh putting out and pumping out doom and gloom and it's like you really just have to be able to walk it's like the thread the eye of the needle it's like you have to be able to sort of like walk with things being not great and also be like i it's it's like i'm going to make the situation as good as i can like that's on me the whole like though i may walk through the valley of death but I will fear no evil thing mm-hmm. is really sticking out to me as this like very gold pilled idea <laughs> of like, well, yes, yeah, people are like actually losing their fucking minds legit right now. But like, how can I, how can I control what I can control? And like, how can I ready and position myself in a way and like, you know, connect with other people and position myself with other people who are like, maybe like not decaying at like this alarming rate under, I mean, this is a lot of pressure, like that's real. And so, you know, I'm totally like sympathetic to that, but um, yeah, Absolutely. I want to, I think that's a really nice place to segue into um, a chat, a chatter about my villain era maybe but also just like boundaries and like drawing lines and like you know just I'm interested to see what type of strands we can parse out there so yeah I think I just came to a point this last week where I really like it's like I got angry enough to set fire to a lot of things that like it was long overdue some mm-hmm. of those uh you Blackening. know yeah like it was kind of <laughs> and I feel like for my the majority of my life I've been very nice girl but like maybe not always taking into consideration like what's on the receiving end of the niceness so there's a lot of like programming for women that indicates mm-hmm. that you have to be super nice right like and that's like part of So I'm kind of, you know, having my own little moment of like kind of deconstructing that because there's just a lot of like people who do not fucking matter, like who I don't care, like, you know, and this is just like my honest truth of like, I don't care like about even seeming kind of mean to some people because they're not like in the space to like discern my heart or like appreciate like the spirit of what I have to say or like what I like you know there's just a certain way to interact with someone and so I kind of feel like I've gotten to a place where I'm like drawing boundaries and am calling it my villain era but you know not I think for me to go from like we call it your healing era is what we call it era yeah like where where I go from being way nice to being like a little mean so that I can like bounce back into just having yeah really normal there were people with people where like I am able to communicate like what my boundaries are in the moment or like have just like a stronger stronger backbone or like a stronger ability to like advocate for myself like if I don't want to go somewhere just being like no I don't want to go <laughs> you know it's like that's yeah. simple. or it can be that simple and so I'm trying to make it that simple you know yeah well just think of it this way too like it being nice to everyone is not necessarily a helpful thing to the world like there are people that are really nice um to nancy pelosi so and that's cool but um great. not every yeah great so th- not yeah. but it doesn't really do any good the world isn't like a net better place because people are nice so 
I don't think there's any, I think it's like, you should be cordial with people. I think there's a decorum to keep, um, in yeah. civilized society, but I also definitely think that that is, look, everyone is their own player and everyone has the reasons they operate that when they do. And I think it's much better to have a controlled no than an irate no when you have just been pushed to your limits. You know what I mean? I think it's yeah. always better to be in control of your energy. Um, and as a f- I'm not even going to say as a former people people pleaser, as a person who is continuously addressing my people pleasing tendencies on like a minute by minute basis, it's not easy to like stand in your like not I don't want to say in your truth, but it's mm-hmm. not to like because there is I'm I'm a big deal with the objective truth, but there's our experience to stand in your experience of what has happened and actually like say no, it actually. It did happen this way. And when we do that, it makes the rest of our lives make so much more sense because we're finally believing what we've been saying for, you know, however long. And not everyone is deserving of your kindness, girl. A lot of people oh see a kind person coming a mile away and they're, you know, they they have different designs on your kindness. So I'm glad that you're um, taking that into consideration for sure. Oh just- yeah, I'm like very like done with like just being nice for the sake of being nice. Like I'm even kind of getting to this place where I'm kind of sniffing out like where people are coming from cuz some people like hop into my DMs and or message me other ways and have questions, right, about like astrology or about like what I know, whatever that is. And I think I'm Hmm. kind of listening for maybe where that is coming from a little bit deeper, where I'm kind of listening to, are they having like the desire to know something because it will add wisdom, like, or add to their experience as a seeker, like as somebody who's like wanting to enrich their personal experience or, are they seeking to know something because they want to know it so that they can seem like, you know, I think that there's right. a lot of people that don't always come from like the most right. upright place, you know? Well, it's, I look at it like this too. It's like such a cruel, weird world out there and it <laughs> creates lots of weird shaped people. And sometimes people, even if their intentions are good, they won't like what they hear and they'll have weird information and I don't feel like I we're different because you're an astrologer but I don't feel like when people ask that stuff I'm a good resource for that so I usually just kind of let that go um simply because I'm not I I don't have like an expertise in that but also for the reasons that you say which are that you're kind of like ferreting out which is not everyone that sometimes the best way for people to find things out, out is is through directly asking but a lot of times there's ways to find that information out that'll sort of entrain your own personal situation your experience your body if you will your body language and you're you're going to be so much better off from having to have struggled for that information I know that sounds very counterintuitive but the things that I've just been handed in life I have never appreciated as much as the things that I've had to work for myself and one of those things that I've had to work very very hard for is my emotional and uh and internal well-being and how to get back to a place of homeostasis where I can like feel like I recharge myself every night and that was done through a lot of trial and error and a lot of studying like we were talking about earlier deep her- esoteric and hermo- the hermetic philosophies and and making sense of those and synthesizing things and realizing that there were certain things that certain groups talked about and other groups talked about and making sense of that. So you're actually going to be getting like a much more thorough answer by looking this stuff up and making sense of it yourself rather than asking the wonderful and talented and incredibly intuitive Meredith. Like Meredith can give you an answer, you know, go ahead. Even other astrologers like have kind of recently like in the like last like month and a half kind of put it like have asked me questions that like Mm -hmm. could very readily be figured out by like going to fucking google you know so I'm just kind of aware that I'm like I'm not like the answers machine and you know just having like less 
expectations of myself with who I get back to. Um, so yeah, <laughs> all this talk about like the black pill has gotten in the abyss and then the deep, the, mm. the going into the deep of the ocean and recovering, you know, your, your heart or soul or whatever, Ursula style has gotten me thinking about, um, just sort of my own stagnation with the gold pill lately. And mm -hmm. um, I've been really concerned because there's a lot of people you can tell by the content that's coming out that people have been kind of less inspired. Obviously, there's a lot more people that just kind of know what's going on now. And it's not really a thing to be talking about like, hey, this is how they're trying to get you. It's still good to know sometimes about some things. But I think that I really in swimming in the black pilled waters have really, you were talking about it earlier. You just said it, you're awake now. What? And I think that that's kind um, of where we have decided to, we're still going to talk about the issues that are coming at us and stuff, but we really want to focus on this idea of now, what do we do? What are the next steps that we take? And you definitely don't have to like listen or follow any of them, but there's just things that maybe helped Meredith and me and, I, that's where I'm at with it is we just really want to help people feel more comfortable in their bodies and heal. And that's going to be different for everyone. Sometimes that's going to be religion for some people, for other individuals, it's going to be religions that those people don't like. And for other people, it's going to be self and some people it's going to be diet. And it's going to look so different for everyone. You would be shocked at how different it will be, but everyone does need, I'm not going to say everyone, most people once they really get down to the nitty gritty, realize that there is like a healing element that needs to take place. And we discuss that a lot on the Montauk effect, but I think that's kind of like more like psychology stuff. This is more like body work, how to even get yourself to a space of receiving your own psychology, maybe through esoteric wisdom, like you were talking about, Mare. So those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking we're going to be putting out and focusing more on, or at least in, in yeah. greater part, because I don't want people that come to the gold pill to get black pills. We want to keep them gold pilled and make sure that they are like very, how, they live at the very least, like personally meaningful, productive lives, for whatever that looks like for them. And so that's, I think our vision and our hope and what gives us the gold pill feels. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like with the whole you're awake now, what concept, it's funny because like, you know, I've been listening, this is kind of a, a side street, but I've yeah. been listening to a lot of Jason Kristoff because I've kind of been like hitting the caffeine, the coffee pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I kind of think that it's funny because I was drinking coffee when that kind of idea came to me and I was like you know what that's actually kind of like coffee is like you know black right it's mm -hmm. like it it is messy and it is hard to control like especially if you spill grinds everywhere well good luck it you know yeah it stains it has like you know it also has like this jolting effect of like whoa you know like a little bit mm. to me especially if you're like a fast metabolizer of caffeine and so um I think that yeah that just struck me as interesting the parallel there that. so I guess like I would um I yeah I would want to include just like some baseline like skills of how to regulate your breath and your breathing and you know how to just really provide like some actual like tangible and intangible tools to deal with some of the strange energetics as well that are involved in like the, you know, the blackening and then the goldening process, uh, you know, and so I, I, it's just our idea to maybe like put out a couple of, um, you know, classes or lectures where there's a little bit with, with a little bit more information dense than the podcast. And so we'll be coming up with whatever that shapes up to be, which I'm really excited because I think that, you know, I, I didn't really like come to this sort of black pill place or the conspiracy awareness place mm -hmm. until I had established some level of like understanding of how the spirit world works and how energy works and you know just 
as I understand it, right? My my understanding, like everyone else's, is human and imperfect, but there are definitely a lot of tools that I've picked up over the years that could definitely help people to balance themselves and to understand like how to acclimate to the various seasons of life and um ritual yeah. and alchemy and a uh, little bit of psychic development or imagination development so I'm really excited Amy <laughs> just in other words that you know we're doing this together because I think it's going to be helpful for people and also kind of bring us back to like what the original intention and messaging of the gold pill is which is just like the individual divinity that is that is the savior like that is the the light shining at the end of the tunnel like it's you <laughs> surprise <laughs> it's you or it's you combined with like a like a, a an energy or it's that energy yeah. that you are not receiving as you you it's like it, it's gonna it really is gonna appear to the person how they have been they're most able to receive it you know yeah. and that's what's that's what's tricky, I think, for a lot of people is because it's like when you say it's not, if, if you are someone who says it's you, then the person who believes it's Christ is like, well, it's only Christ. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, I get it. Like, it's going to come to the person how they can receive it. And hopefully that's like in a redemptive way yeah. that shows I mean, you. Yeah, go ahead. That process of like, you know, that's the whole thing. Like the two are not mutually exclusive, right? The right. whole process of like, um, of aligning to like the Christ energy in your heart and, um, the new site and like the new personal depths that that can bring you to is like 100%. Like, I feel like a part of this all, I mean, he kind of like showed us how to do it first you know and so that's just where I come from but obviously like everybody can come from where they come from you know I don't know oh totally that's just I you know I am at this place right now I guess personally where I just I'm having a real like reconciliation of Tower of Babel I guess for lack of a better way of oh my god yeah because Mars is direct now in Gemini and it's like holy shit we are all not the same <laughs> right and I'm just realizing that there's been ways that we okay so I was Sean was watching some guy that was talking about free speech and of course right he's talking to a bunch of like right wing you know guys in in like the house of commons about mm -hmm. free speech and talking about triggering and woke and using all these like words and I'm just like first of all you're talking to a bunch of people who already agree with you so like and then also i'm just thinking like when they hear this guy this like white dude in a suit with an english accent they, whether or not it's right of them to have a prejudice they have a prejudice against like what that's going to be they don't want to hear that message from that dude right like it doesn't matter who we are i don't want to hear that message from that dude so immediately people are getting turned off but it's not like what he's saying is wrong or bad it's just the wrong person delivering it in a really really like clunky way and so i was like if we could figure out all these like words that are basically just taboo to each side right like things that make someone just shut off or trigger and we can tr it's like you try to talk around those words in a language that is more unifying i think i think that's the beginning of it is because we're all not we're all most people even if you avoid the news whatever you're still kind of conditioned to like fall on one side or the other unless you were literally actively trying not to do that it's I just think like in order to like traverse God. to traverse these waters like prop and I'm not saying properly, I would consider it properly for me in right. traversing these waters where like there's a baseline current of like respect and like just, you know what I mean? Like in, in decency in some of those interactions where like, you know, somebody might not agree with me on everything, but they can still like allow me to exist in that space with them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't um, know. It's, just, it's something went, that, that it's a very tricky balance, and I think it requires like us to kind of go there and be willing to discuss things and not like I don't know. It's like there's something about like for me when I'm being like witnessed to that 
makes me feel, and this is a great place to talk about something else we were talking Mm -hmm. about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about like being preached at or to, and this is for all this, this message, this public service announcement is for all people, like including me. Yeah. Just, and me, there's something about being preached at or to, and like being deeply convicted that your medicine is like the ultimate medicine or that you have found like the it of all things, you know, like this is what I feel like happens with like people that fall into like the new age real hard and like without proper boundaries, like we were discussing earlier. And then they wind up in a very like dark type of situation. And then they go immediately into like full on, like fundamentalist, like literalist um, Christianity. And I feel that there's something for me about being witness to that makes me feel as though all of the inquiry and like personal discipline and like the hours I mean you know me girl I have this is not like just the Mm -hmm. this is this is my life like you know what I mean so we are in this bitch and there's always like something to be done and like a ritual to do or like there's always like you know what I mean there's always more and it's an ever unfolding process so this idea that like the truth would be so easily packaged for you and just like put into you know and just for me that's a little illusory so it just depends on like how people are like approaching me how I can approach them where like we can venture into some of these places that are a bit more like conversationally dangerous for lack of a better word I mean you know I don't think they're dangerous but you know like I know yeah to traverse some of those waters where like I know there's going to be like a fundamental baseline like respect for the process how it's unfolding for each person because like I just you know I I really don't like this idea that anybody has like the absolute truth of all things like look at where we are like that is delusional to me like it's you know what I mean and so everybody has their own interpretation of it for sure from where we are but like I'm of the perspective that like we are not God necessarily we are part of God maybe but like we are not like I think that there's something very righteous about people regardless of what they're even feeling or even going on about where they get into this very and it on all sides in all places this happens where they just get on this very like righteous energy and that like provides a lot of barriers um, to curiosity oh, yeah. to discovery you know I would think that that like in I want to call it instinctive because it's like a papa bear like instinctual righteousness is because yeah. you- it's like an unhealed i've just come from okay here's how i'll describe it leah remini had that show on scientology where she exposed like she was part of scientology for so many years and like basically like you know was complicit with a lot of it and then she comes out and exposes it but the first thing she does girl she goes over and joins the catholic church which is like girl you know that place is just as bad right <laughs> but it's not- she the didn't know. The fire. Yes, but she could in her mind, she's like the the opposite of what I'm doing has got to be the correct thing. And so that's where I think it's like we come from this world of illusion. We get presented with these little truth bits, right? And we're like, you guys have all been lied to. And I know the truth because I've been there. Like I've, you know, I was, too, I was but like not for very long. No, I think like, that the last two year bardo, the 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 yeah, portal yeah. that we've been in has really really mess with people's sense of time and sense of of what is happening in the world there are literally people still posting memes from 2020 on both sides of the fence i will not name names and it's like we are in 2023 the issues have moved they've evolved they have like, totally oh. moved and it's really interesting to see like okay i just have to for a second talk about this stupid Okay, so stuff is coming out about the thingy, right? The Mm -hmm. lollipop, the injectable, whatever we're going to call it. Stuff has been coming out about it 
we get it like nobody wanted this to happen like I just don't understand how like ugh, I'm just like there's this information machine wheel around the thingy uh-huh. that just never stops and like I wish personally that it would stop because I knew what it was going to do to people or like you know uh-huh. I just knew that we I and you know so it's like we don't <laughs> the project veritas thing and the pfizer guy being exposed i we get it like they have been doing this shit where they are doing creepy billionaire mad scientist like completely opportunistic like very sketchy dodgy yeah stuff. so yeah what are we gonna do <laughs> okay that's nice but like what do we do you know so to me like i kind of like i'm over that part of the information machine, I guess, like, I've just seen it, like, I just get it. And I'm like, okay, you know, for me, I feel like I'm more likely to do like to put my attention on something like the economy, or like the natural resources, like, where are those going? Like, what's happening in that space, like, just from a practical perspective, and I might say, like, okay, what's going on inside my body? Like, that's also, it's just, there's directions that I think the astrology helps me to kind of, like, Mm -hmm. keep track of. And yeah, the issues have moved. And there's, like, this whole other thing that could be happening this year or next that surrounds, like, you know, digital ID and, like, CBDCs. And there's just, like, this whole other, and so it's just, it's kind of, like, humorous to me like we get it and like you know it's very unfortunate what has happened and like gosh like man that really you know it just really sucks and like if only people had been like screaming like no like we're headed off a cliff you know but like whatever like you know that's for me to resolve obviously just like whatever that is of like you know I don't know like if I just need to keep seeing just it's... I, I figure those memes are important for people who like are just there's people that are just like still on different you know tracks of like waking sure, sure, up sure. So, but I totally hear you where it's like um you know here's where it gets frustrating because for mm-hmm. the the issues have moved and the the thing is is that people still have the 2020 like boogeyman where like the the guy on the right is imagining like the antifa blm like guy and they're still talking about that and the guy on the left is still talking about like the anti vac you know whatever oh and my god kind of, they, so they imagine when they think about how shitty the world is instead of being like oh we've gotten in this place because of a bunch of organized like billionaires and corporations and fascism they look at it like oh look at that guy across the aisle that sucks which by the way is like how they oppress you and it's like um dave smith was able to eat even like using Google, like the way that the lexicon that words are used, able to find out that like racism and stuff didn't come back into the lexicon on the internet and like in a in a real, real way until like 2010, like right after Occupy Wall Street happened, which was ultimately one of the most like three formed unifying things where people mm-hmm. realize oh we look up that's the problem but then immediately when that happened it was like you guys hate each other racist i'm not saying it didn't and exist at all. no it was like it was like boom it was culture like war yes exactly instead and so of this being yes. class oriented as it should be where we're like I mean, that's the thing, like, I think that Occupy Wall Street in some ways was really u- unifying, was in an, like, in an own little yeah. operation in another way, maybe, but, like, that's fine. I mean, like, everything here kind of gets, like, bastardized watered down, and, yeah, yeah, so, um, but I think that, yeah, they had, because there was, like, a real sense of, like, I felt like, anyway, groundswell and, like, class consciousness that's very threatening to I feel like all of this because it's ultimately these are class issues like so like what we're dealing with right now like or what we have like in my opinion like based on the astrology and based on just like my awareness of like what the sort of plans are is like a class issue you know these are this is like this is not this is not it's a not political. this is a class yes like this is distilled down this is a like an attempt to like create a feudal to, slave, like, to enslave like, humanity yeah like so this is a class issue 
like so I'll just continue to say that like a parrot until I'm just blue in the face like so for me like I listened to some of the people at like the revolutionary blackout network which is um they actually call themselves like socialist and communist but they're actually they have like a sense of class consciousness I like that shit they make fun of Davos and like Mm -hmm. they make fun of billionaires and they don't sim for any politicians and like I'm with that shit whatever it is like their war coverage is pretty much like the best right the best in terms of like you know so for me like it doesn't really matter like what words people use or like what people call themselves like I just want to feel like a certain level of resonance of like okay maybe we don't agree on everything but like there's some part of me that like strongly yes. fucks with like what's going on with you and everything that you're doing so and I know. really I really do thank Biden and Harris administration for this because when Trump was in office it was really easy to be like the right wing scapegoat sucks right but in, when in fact it was just like obviously he did it, right but like there was it was always like the the establishment and then with with Biden it's like so obvious you like they don't have anyone else bes- it's they're desperate right both sides are like desperate and it's like instead of hating each other it's a great time to yeah find the unifying aspects find the people yeah. across the aisle who don't like war who don't like slavery you know oh my god I can't who believe don't it. like who yeah. don't like he like who don't like homelessness who don't like uh who systemic corruption who don't like green I mean there's just like a level of like we have to I mean it's real there's, there's no other it's real way and this is why like I feel just like annoyed sometimes at the state of people because like we have to come together like we have to be able to see like where all right like I think about this okay so let's meme for a second girl before we wrap it up mm-hmm. like let's let's have a little memeing and dreaming session right mm-hmm. in, in community say we were to like create a community <laughs> uh-huh theoretically speaking hypothetically theoretically. you know um yeah like surely <laughs> <laughs> so you know in theory <clears throat> if we were to create a community it would have to be like, I feel, and this is just my perception where I have this guy friend who I feel like we could together, like just me and him be sort of like a, not like, wouldn't be like police or government, but I think that the ability to recognize within like even a small community like if there's a rat, you know what I'm saying? And then to address it, or like if there's a leak in the container somewhere, you know, I think that, um, (laughs) that every single community at this point that I'm aware of, like has been somehow like diverted and subverted. And I think that there has to be like a greater level of awareness of how exactly that happens. And, you know, like I think about like where I'm living and, you know, just how every culture and community over like a long period of time has been kind of subverted because they let the wrong people in or they trusted the wrong person or something like this. So I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, theoretically speaking, Mm -hmm. if I were to create a community, I would want for like there to be like a certain level of just like expected integrity or like something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Where people can come together, they might not always agree with one another, but it's like, I don't know, I just think that the ability to kind of like self govern and like course correct and have like the hard conversation sometimes like I know that it's sometimes like not what we want to do but you know at the end of the day like we have to sometimes air it out or whatever Mm -hmm. it's just I think that there's like this baseline of like speaking of words right like conflict resolution like de-escalation ability that I think comes over time with healing but you know yeah do you have anything to say about just like 
conflict resolution, de-escalation, because I feel like that is a skill within itself, like to know when to push your foot on the gas or on the brakes in terms of just like, yeah. I just say like what, what has always helped me and what has always has like guided me through even like really like tough kind of dicey situations is I allow for space for the other person to fully like still be them. And I Mm -hmm. always will, and in a way, like, like I know I'm not taking the blame when I say things like, I am fully willing to like accept responsibility for what, you know what I mean? Like I, not because I'm like, oh, it should be off of you, but because I want to like frame it to the other person and like prime them to be able to receive what I'm saying from an area of non-judgment. And I think that that is the hardest thing is reconciling the righteousness that one sort of is imparted with when they get this information with the ability to be graceful and also, you know, explain things to people. I, you know, God, Mayor, this is just like mm. an assumption. I hear so many people in this godforsaken community Rawr. talk to their listeners like they are fucking idiots. Like everyone is fucking stupid and that you just, you hear it, you hear it, you really? hear it. Like, yes. I like I a lot that. Yeah, I don't like it either because I don't think that the people that listening, I think everyone is is able to receive at some point. It's just not everyone knows they are and not everyone like has the bandwidth due to the life they've had. And I think it's really just, it's not for everyone to offer the space of healing like my Piscean dumb mind wants to do. That's totally like my vibe. But I will say that like always- yeah holding space for people to be them and have it be like non-judgment try to understand why they're doing what they're doing and then it's like let's solve it you know what I mean like let's yeah. how do we go from here where do we go from here is one of my favorite things that I've picked up this year we definitely catch more uh flies with honey than with you know fucking like righteous it's objectively driven <laughs> to be and nice also, like- nice what is the word? We can't you say nice. What's the word? It's being, um, oh, we'd have to come up with a word for that because you're not being nice. What you're trying to do is ultimately reach an objective of not having this conflict, right? But it's yeah. not to, like cheat them or to not be angry or to spiritually bypass anything. It's like to truly just non judgmentally let people air their shit out. And it's amazing how. Oh, works. Yeah. I mean, people are so uh, like mostly feel unheard, like misunderstood. Like that's the general like idea that I have, like from doing my practice as long as I have, you know, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, well, I guess we'll continue this on Patreon. You can find us on patreon.com slash take the gold pill, where we're going to be posting episodes more regularly and Maybe we'll continue this chat chatter about gold and alchemy and black pills and yeah, just a bunch of stuff on the other side. Um, Amy, where can they reach you? You can find us at take the gold pill at took the gold pill, or you can find me at she's Amy D on Instagram and Meredith, you want to share yours? Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Meredith's lucky stars. And yeah, I hope that you guys have a great uh morning afternoon evening week life life yeah (laughs) all right take care Bye. bye